Hey Woodies, Wood Pops here. So you want to see what happened to that oak burl that we turned in the last episode? You remember the one that had all the cracks and the voids in it? That nasty looking oak burl that Hurricane Irma left me? Stick around in this episode, we're going to fix it right up. In this episode of Expressions in Wood, we're going to take that oak burl that we turned in the last episode, the one that Hurricane Irma dropped on me, and we're going to fix all of those cracks and those voids using crushed stone inlay. And then at the end of the episode, I'm going to reveal one of my secret techniques to turn that ordinary piece into an extraordinary work of art. Maybe, maybe not. You'll have to stick around and see. In any case, please subscribe. Click the little bell down there so that you won't miss any future episodes. And we'll get to it right now. All right, all right, all right. Let's go. Hey, here we are. We got this nasty old burl here. And the first thing we've got to do to it is we got to protect the wood from the CA glue. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a coat of uh, sanding sealer, CA sealer on it, which is, of course is my solution of, of shellac and denatured alcohol. So that's what we're going to do first here. Shellac. And we're just we're just gonna start inside here. This thing all protected up. Everything looks good. So we have enough sanding sealer protecting on there. Dry. Phase one is complete. I'm going to go clean my brush. And we'll be back later. Okay, I'm back for phase two, and in phase two, we're going to clean out all of the voids and all of the cracks that we're going to fill with crushed stone inlay, because as you recall, we covered the whole piece with the solution of shellac and denatured alcohol to protect the wood from staining by the CA glue. So now I want to go back in all those areas where I'm going to lay in the stone I want to clean the shellac out.
As you can see, I'm using my Dremel, and the bit in the Dremel is an elongated burr tool. This is the first bit I use when I want to clean out the larger voids. In this area right here, I'm preparing the outside of the rim for my secret technique that we'll use at the end. So make sure you stick around and see what that is. As you probably noticed, I switched from the burr bit in my Dremel to a smaller carbide tip bit so that I may get into the smaller cracks. The next thing I'm going to switch to is my NSK Presto because it takes smaller bits still I can get into the even smaller cracks. And finally, I'll end up with a sharp point carbide bit so that I can add a little eye candy here. Be sure and stick around and see what that is. Oh, what was that? That was a little gecko. We're going to take a little gecko and we're going to put him right on the side of this piece. I'm going to take the image from a sheet that I printed out that I researched on the internet. And I'm just going to use a piece of tracing paper and a simple pencil and transfer this image onto the side of my bowl. Watch and see how I do it. Wow, a little crystal gecko on the side of our piece. How intriguing. 
All right, all right, all right. We're ready to go. This is Wood Pops. We're getting ready to inlay this piece. <laughs> I know the nose has got to go, huh? That was a little much. If you can't have fun doing this, why bother, right? <clears throat> got my safety glasses on because you never know when this stuff might come up in your face. So the other thing is when you're using super glue, CA glue, especially very thin, you want to protect your eyes. You don't want this splashing up in your eyes. So as a precaution. The other thing is you want to make sure you have all your ventilation wide open. You got your fans going, your doors open, and as soon as I'm done recording this intro here, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop and I'm going to open my doors and turn my fans on. So this is the last time I'll speak to you unless I'm doing a void uh, unless I'm doing a voiceover, getting my voids and my voices mixed up. It's what happens when you get to be an old man. Okay? So let's get started here. We're going to start with this void right here on the bottom. And the first thing we're going to use is some man-made turquoise. As in all my projects, I'll be using the Starbond Super Thin CA Glue and I'll be using the Stick Fast Activator. Remember to go easy on the activator because it can cause clouding and bubbling. I'm going to sprinkle in a little tiny bit of the blue man-made goldstone. Remember my motto, less is more. At this point right here, I'm going to use crushed stone that's about the size of a grain of salt. I'm going to sprinkle it in because I want it to fall in and around the larger pieces that I've already added to fill in all the little voids. See how it filled those cracks in nicely? This is a little bit different than doing a bowl rim inlay. On a bowl, it stays in place. This, you got to be careful because the glue will run out over the side of the rounded part of your piece. So you got to be real careful. Notice the size of the crushed stone that I'm using as this sequence progresses. As I get further and further along in this, I keep reducing the size of the crushed stone all the way down to just below the size of table salt. It's almost powdery in form. This is so that you can fill in all the small little cracks and get everything nice and even. Now we have to address this big void right here. I hope that's not too close where it's blurry. 
So we have two options to go with this void. One, we can just highlight the cracks around it and we can leave the void because it's some really nice character. You can see that. Some great character there. Or we can fill that in. Since this is a video on filling cracks and voids, I'm going to fill that in. I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay? Hang on. Don't go anywhere because we're going to get right to that void. If you haven't subscribed yet, this would be a good opportunity for you to pop down there, hit the subscribe button, and ring the little bell. I'm going to use this piece of uh, black heavy duty duct tape, put it on the inside of the bowl, make sure the edges are all pressed down nice and tight so the glue doesn't leak through. Then I'm going to apply my crushed stone to the outside. and I'm going to sprinkle them right in there. And it'll stick to the duct tape, but you don't worry about that because we're going to sand that out anyway, so that won't matter. We just want to get a nice layer right in there. Then I'm going to take some smaller pieces and fill them in. And then I'm going to take some of this powder I'm layering it all in there. I want to cover that first layer of turquoise. And I'm going to tap it now. See that all settling? Okay. So here's what we've got now. We have this beautiful inclusion right here in the wood. You can see it. It's got this beautiful bark. It's got all of this really nice character. So at this point in time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the mineral inlay with the beauty of the inclusion by not filling it all up. I'm just going to have a little bit of crushed stone in there and the crushed stone is not going to be sanded, it's not going to be smooth, it's going to be rough just like you see it. People are going to look at that and they're going to say, wow, was that in the wood? And you're going to say, that's my secret. So we're going to seal that in with CA glue and that inclusion is done. What do you think? You like it? You don't like it? Please let me know in the comments. I would appreciate it. You know what? Let's make this pop, shall we? We're going to make this pop. You know what I mean? when I say pop, don't you? Remember Emeril Lagasse, the famous chef? He used to say BAM when he put something in unusual. Okay, here we go. BAM! See that? That's a little secret. You get that for free. Wow. That is frickin' awesome. Voids and cracks. I've got some more inclusions over here. I'm going to fill these. Oh, wait a minute. What's this? Oh, we have a little gecko sneaking on us we need to take care of.
let's deal with that gecko next, shall we? I'm going to fill this little gecko in with this green gold stone. I'm also going to use a little bit of pale green fuchsite as some highlights. And then I'm going to use some black jet out on his fingers and toes of his little feet. At this point in time, you just use your artistic imagination and do what you like to this little gecko. Alrighty. Okay, as you can see, I filled all the voids and cracks on this piece and we're ready to start sanding. I'm going to power sand each one of these spots that we inlaid. I'm going to use 80 grit sandpaper. I'm going to make sure my spindle's locked and stationary. And at the same time, I'm going to be removing any tool marks that I can find. I stop the lathe and lock my spindle. And with my power drill and my sanding disc, I sand each piece of the inlaid burl separately, making sure that I sand away all of the glue and the excess proud mineral inlay. Also make sure that I sand away any tool marks. I do this all the way around Once I have sanded the piece all the way around, all the tool marks are removed, all the mineral inlay that is proud of the burl has been removed, and I'm ready to go on and sand the whole piece while it's moving. At this point, I'll switch to my right angle sander, and I'll put on two sanding pads as cushions. The piece has been completely sanded with 80 grit paper. It's ready to move on to the 100 grit all the way through 1000 grit using my right angle sander. Wow, look how great it looks when I apply a little bit of denatured alcohol. You can see what we're going to look like here. And this is only sanded to 80 grit. I'm going to go ahead and finish sanding the piece all the way through 1000 grit off camera. I'll be back shortly. Don't go away. You want to stick around and see what my surprise secret fix is on this burl left by Hurricane Irma. Okay, I've sanded all the way through 800 grit. And now I'm going to switch over and use my Aberlon pads by Merca. And I'm going to sand from 1,000 through 4,000. Each individual little spot of mineral inlay. Then we're going to switch over to the Beal system. And we're going to buff the whole piece with the Triple E, the White Diamond, and then the Wax. And then we'll be ready to go over and do this secret technique that I promised. We are finished polishing and it is sweet. Check it out. For my bonus technique, we're going to use some walnut shavings, which came off of my bandsaw. We're going to use some medium thick star bond, and we're going to use some super thin star bond, and we're going to use a little stick fast. We're also going to use my Dremel with the burr tool. We're going to be adding some faux bark here. 
If you recall in the earlier part of the video, I chopped up the edge of the bowl here to make it rough. The first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little bit of thin CA glue, then a layer of medium thick CA glue. Then I'm going to add a little bit of the walnut shavings. Then I'm going to move a little bit further along the rim of the bowl to the next area and I'm going to rinse and repeat that and I'm going to go all the way around to where the bark already exists. Watch and see how I do it. As you can see here, I've got a nice layer of faux bark along this edge. We're going to let that dry just a second, and then I'm going to get my stick fast out, and I'm going to shoot a little bit on there. Then the next thing I'm going to do is take a little brush, a little stiff brush, and I'm going to brush that excess uh, shavings off. I'm going to use my Dremel and the burr tool to knock the top off of this faux bark to make it look more realistic. It's just a matter of feel and sight, what looks best to you. Okay, check it out there. It's looking pretty good. Almost looks like real bark. By the time we're done, you won't be able to tell the difference between the real bark and the faux bark. The next thing we're going to do here is we're going to put some lichen on. See that lichen? We're going to add some of that to our faux bark. We're going to duplicate our lichen with some crushed fuchsite, which is kind of a pale green. It also has a little shimmer to it, so it almost looks exactly like that pale green lichen you see there on the real bark. One last little bit of super thin CA glue here to set everything up. That looks pretty good. Wow. What do you think? That's, that looks like real bark. Nobody will be able to tell the difference. Well, that wraps up that episode of Expressions in Wood. I hope you liked it. Be sure and tell me down in the comments what you thought. If you haven't subscribed, please do so right there. And the next video is up right over there. Be sure and check it out. Thanks a lot.